So many of you have been in touch saying you are being bombarded by the pressure to have this vaccination. Um, some people are saying that they've had eight texts and two phone calls in as many days. Others saying that they're called repeatedly, texted, and then eventually someone gets hold of them and says, well, I'll book you in, and then if you want to cancel it, you can sort that out later. Presumably they're being incentivized on the number of people they can book in, and that's why there's the hard sell for that. And it seems that this pressure is not only coming from this generalized sense that everybody has to has the vaccine, it's been specifically woven into um, the system by this document and no doubtedly other more sinister documents. This one is an NHS document. Apologize for the, uh, I apologize for the scribbling on it, but I've been reading it multiple times. NHS England and NHS Improvement. So this comes from inside the socialized healthcare system. It's from the Behavioral Change Unit. That should make your eyebrows go up in partnership with Warwick Business School, blah, blah, blah. And there's various behavioral units. I'm just going to grab them that have been working on this. Um, the Government Behavioural Change Unit, uh, the NHS Behavioural Economics Unit, um, Cabinet Office Behavioural Insights Team. You can see where this is going, NHS and government working together. But what's most sinister about this document that goes on for a number of pages is it's essentially how to persuade or coerce people into having the vaccination by playing on their worst fears and their lesser elements. It's almost behavioural manipulation of how you persuade people who don't want to have the vaccine to have it. And it goes through each of these by age groups, how you can best manipulate these individuals. What I find really concerning in the front section of this pack, which obviously they sat in a room and had a PowerPoint presentation on, we need about 80% coverage for the vaccination program to be successful. Current research suggests as few as 57% of adults would be vaccinated and between 27 and 33% are undecided. Get this, clinicians will have the vaccine but need more information on efficacy. Why is that a hard word? Might be because I've got earrings that look a bit like gonads. Efficacy and safety before they do. So just to repeat that without my nonsense, clinicians will have the vaccine but need more information on efficacy and safety before they do. So clinicians need more information on safety, what, than regular people, than my mum and dad? Because what, they're special. This document from the NHS acknowledges clinicians don't think they have enough information on safety to have it themselves. Let me continue. So now I'm going to go into the different cohorts and in brief just highlight, that, so there's a whole range of do's and don't, do say this, don't say that, do say this, don't say that. And I've gone through for you and highlighted what I consider to be the most sinister. This is for system leaders, managers and coordinators. You can imagine your bosses or your boss's boss. Um, behavioural insight supporting the advice that you shouldn't underplay the enormity of the task at hand. Ego. React in ways that make us feel better about ourselves and support the impression of a positive and consistent self-image. So it's telling your boss to push uh, the fact that this is a massive challenge and manipulate the ego of individuals that they want the most positive impression of themselves in the workplace. That's an absolute madness. Um, then it talks about what the rollout needs to be successful. Don't assume leaders will know what to do. And it talks about um, default settings. We go with the flow of preset options and regularly accept what the easy default setting is. So it's encouraging leaders to manipulate the fact that people are more likely to go with the easy default or whatever everyone else is doing than to think for themselves. This document encourages bosses to play on that. Let's now go on to health and care workers. These are the immunizers themselves, the people sticking the needle in you. And then they use this, um, they're going to the, the point of saying, don't make it sound too onerous. Don't make it that immunizing people would be an onerous task. Messages or actions that will land well. So this is what they are telling you to say, the narrative for someone holding the needle. 
Immunizers are the latest NHS heroes. Your important role will make a difference, enabling people to return to normal. And they use this phrase over and over, trying to pay off having the vaccine will mean return to normal. But it's telling the NHS people who are going to be holding the needle, you're the new hero. That's what you're becoming by, by taking this needle and shoving it in someone. You're the new he hero. Let's move to this, care home residents. So this is going to be the much older population. Um, there's a line in here somewhere that I found, and it's about um, playing on the national effort. So remember Captain Tom, love his heart. But they specifically say for the care home generation, you should really ramp up this, uh, promote this is a national effort with everyone pulling together. You see where Captain Tom came in there. You see why the media loved him so much because for that cohort, it was the wartime spirit of pulling together. They suggest, and this is, I just find this really, I find it insulting. Your care home is safe, posters. I'm halfway there, stickers. So if you've had one jab, you get a badge or a sticker. Recognition of care home's achievement. A certificate to put in the hall. Does that really? That's how we treat children. Over 65s, it tells you in a sinister way to leverage anticipated regret. So what they're saying is to sink into someone who doesn't know whether to have the vaccine or not, the regret they will have if they didn't have it and they get COVID or someone in their family. They're telling the NHS immunizers to leverage that feeling of regret. I mean, that's really sinister. For recipients, they, they again, going back to this, um, make sure that you tell them that this will mean you can return to normal. This is health and care worker recipients. Now, the really alarming line in this, which is somewhat hidden, messages that will land well. National experts and clinical colleagues recommend immediate vaccination because of evidence of safety and efficacy. Now, let's remember when I stumbled over the word earlier, at the front end of this pack, the same pack, it says, clinicians, I'm looking for the document, clinicians will have the vaccine but need more information on efficacy and safety before they do it. Later in the pack, when it's talking to people who work in care homes and work in the NHS, it's telling people trying to sell this into these people that your clinical colleagues recommend it because it's perfectly safe and it's perfectly efficient. There is contradictory stuff in this document, which I can only assume is a document of lives. And so it goes on. Young people, you can imagine for them, it's about telling them uh, if you want to be able to do what you want, if you want less lockdowns, the fastest way of getting that is to have the vaccination. And it says here, playing on their needs for immediate gratification. And they're, they're it's typical that young people overestimate small chances, so manipulate that. I mean, this is what's being pushed inside the NHS and higher up in the stratosphere in order to get people to comply and have this jab. So back to where we started, if you're wondering why you're being pressurised, if you're wondering that it feels like there's a script, if the GP surgeries, your practice uh, receptionist, if she or he asks you to write down your appointment for yourself and the time for yourself, or to confirm to them verbally that if you want to cancel it, you will, and they wait for you to say, yes, I will, there's a reason for that, because it's all in here. It's in the script that's being used to manipulate you into having this vaccine. I do have a copy of this document. I'm very happy to share it with anybody. Um, and remembering I'm not a medical professional, but you know what? At least I'm not someone who's operating according to a pretty cynical script.